Professor Tribe, I had two experiences with that Merrick Garland interview today. I watched it before the Washington Post reporting came out tonight, and then I watched it after the Washington Post reports that Donald Trump is under criminal investigation by the Justice Department. And when you watch it after the Washington Post reporting, the language Merrick Garland chooses seems even stronger. I agree. It seems to me very clear that when Lester Holt asked Merrick Garland, aren't you worried about tearing the country apart, all of these possible collateral consequences of criminally prosecuting a former president, there are so many ways that Merrick Garland could have answered. He could have said, well, we have to weigh everything. We take everything into account. <clears throat> it is the job of the attorney general to weigh all of these factors. But I'm glad he didn't. He very carefully said, almost, almost said, well, that's above my pay grade. That's not my job. I'm the chief prosecutor. I follow the evidence where it leads. And when he said that, of course, he knew he had to know. And he had to know when he was scheduling this interview that people who had testified before the grand jury had spoken to people at the Washington Post. He had to know, didn't know exactly what Carol Lenig's story would say, but he had to know that the fact that the president is being investigated, the former president is being investigated as a potential target of a criminal prosecution would become public. And in light of that, when he chose to say, that's not my business, I'm not the healer in chief, it's not my job, it might be the president's job when he's asked perhaps to grant a pardon the way Ford did to Nixon, it's someone else's jurisdiction to worry about those things. But when I heard him say that in the first place, I thought, that's a very good sign. It suggests that he is not usurping a role that doesn't belong to him. And then when I saw the remarkable reporting in the Washington Post, it all came together. It became clear that the Department of Justice, all the way back before the public hearings began, had been carefully probing several different converging strands of a combined plan to overturn the election. The strand that involved pressure on Pence, hence asking probing questions of Mark Short and of, uh, of Greg Jacobs, and the strand that involved phony electoral certificates, all of it coming together. And it seems to me that when Merrick Garland said what he did, he was coming as close as would have been appropriate to say, yes, we are investigating Donald Trump because we have to make sure that whoever is responsible for attempting to overturn the election is held criminally accountable. He couldn't quite say that, but interpreting somebody that I've known for 50 years, that's what I was hearing him say. And then reading the Washington Post, I thought, yep, that was it. So we are now on a completely different phase. We now know that a former president who quite obviously did all he could uh, to overturn the election is not going to get away without being carefully probed by this department. Of course, there are a lot of choices that remain for the attorney general because there are so many different crimes that this fellow committed, defrauding the United States, um, attempting to overthrow the election, fomenting a violent insurrection, probably seditious conspiracy, which of them should be charged, in what order. All of those decisions, sequential decisions, what evidence, that isn't necessarily going to be decided overnight, but those are decisions of a typical prosecutorial kind. They are not momentous decisions about whether the attorney general is going to make history. And I think he's performing his job admirably and those of us, including me, who were impatient, I think have now been told, see, I was really ahead of the game all along. 